if there were any lingering doubts about the irreducible uncertainty of supply chain, then this year and the previous one proved that uh, to be over the top reminders um, that our world is highly chaotic and doesn't lend itself to perfect forecast. Today, my goal uh, for this presentation is to outline a few takeaways from the M5 forecasting competition that are of key interest to my fellow supply chain practitioners. Although, hopefully, um, those uh, takeaways should also be of interest to the broader forecasting community, if only to get a glimpse of the sort of struggles that happen in real world supply chains. However, before I proceed any further, I would like to um, disclose a, complete, uh, a conflict of interest. I happen to run a company, LOCAD, that is um, a software vendor, and LOCAD sells essentially uh, a predictive optimization technology intended for supply chain. This statement of conflict of interest is the perfect transition to outline what happens when um, you obtain information from a source that is conflicted. What usually happens is a fair amount of distortion in the sort of op information that you get. In the very specific case of um, supply chain software, um, superior forecasting capabilities are a key selling point. And thus, it is relatively unsurprising that um, supply chain software vendors invariably claim to have um, superior state-of-the-art forecasting uh, capabilities of some kind. Yet, my own examination of the top uh, 50 contenders uh, in the M5 competition for either task uh, point forecast and probabilistic forecast alike indicated that um, those supply chain vendors were essentially absent, at least absent from the top ranks of the competition. This is intriguing considering the importance of forecasting accuracy as a selling point in, in this trade. Maybe none of those vendors could be bothered in taking place, uh, taking part to the M5 competition. However, considering the notoriety of this competition, I find it relatively unlikely. Yet, there was one exception. One vendor made it to um, relatively high ranks. Uh, a team of LOCAD did achieve a rank, uh, the rank number five in the uncertainty task, and um, this team even achieved rank number one uh, at the SKU level, that is the most disaggregated, which was the most disaggregated uh, forecasting level in this uh, competition. Unfortunately, very little has changed in um, supply chains since um, the M5 results were published. Vendors keeps making uh, crazy claims about um, superior forecasting technology, while um, the sort of evidence that we have seems to indicate um, the contrary. And the lesson should be, um, vendors will keep doing what they have ever done, which is to inflate the qualities of the product they want to sell, disregarding entirely um, scientific evidence. This is what vendors do, and this should be expected to continue. And thus, the lesson to my, to, I would say, fellow supply chain practitioners should be take the matter into your own hands, um, uh, forge yourself your own opinion, start reading um, the scientific literature and what it has to say on the subject. Um, and in particular, please stop trusting blindly my competitors, the only vendor that you should trust blindly is LOCAD. The most common forecasting technique in um, supply chain software is a technique known as uh, alerts and ex exception. And uh, by the way, LOCAD does not happen to be using this technique. And alerts and exceptions essentially let you manually override your uh, forecasting results. And as far as supply chain uh, planning is concerned, 
the bulk of the software complexity, the bulk of the software code and logic is actually geared toward the uh, management of all those alerts and exceptions, not toward any kind of, um, I would say, statistical algorithm of any kind. At least it is the case for the vast, vast majority of the product in the market. And indeed, uh, this seems to reflect the common wisdom in supply chain circles that the only way to achieve accurate forecast is a very extensive dose of manual overrides on those forecasts. Well, it seems that the M5 um, um, prove pretty much the opposite. Um, as far as I know, none of the top 50 contenders for either task did use any kind of alerts and exception, and certainly not to um, generate their workload of manual forecasting overrides. And this really begs the question whether these techniques actually work at all. And the OCAM razor indicate that um, unless new results emerge to actually prove that alerts and exceptions are of any, I would say, relevance, we should rather believe the, um, that it is not the case. And my personal take on alerts and exception is that it is essentially um, the modern form of numerology. However, the lesson is um, that mystic arts um, intended to capture a glimpse of the future have been with us for a long, long time. And thus the lesson should be that even if the M5 is very clearly nudging the community in the right direction, um, we should expect that those mystic arts and include alert and exception in this pack to stay with us for a long time still. Now, while having too much trust in um, supply chain forecasting vendors and their semi-magical uh, methods like alert and exception is wrong, having too little trust in forecasting itself is wrong also. And I believe that M5 goes a long way in proving that as well. In supply chain circle, there is a widespread belief that there are many situations that are simply unforecastable when products are um, erratic, intermittent, and that there are many situations in which, for example, the sales cannot be even be approached through uh, means of statistical nature. Again, I believe that um, M5 went a long way in proving the opposite with the uncertainty task, uh, this part of the challenge. Yes, forecasting inaccuracy and forecasting uncertainty is irreducible, but that doesn't mean that we should entirely give up. On the contrary, we should actually try to tame and quantify this uncertainty. This is exactly what probabilistic forecasts are about. Supply chain, unfortunately, has a long history of being um, dismissive when it comes to uncertainty. People like to feel um, in control of the situation and probabilistic forecasting shatters this illusion. The F5, however, reminds us that when facing a difficulty, we should address frontally this difficulty instead of dismissing it. Um, the most common excuse in supply chain circles to um, disregard uncertainty seems to be that it's just too difficult, technically speaking. Yet, um, uh, looking at the results at the M5, what we can see is that the sort of technological overhead associated with state-of-the-art uh, point forecasting method seems to be roughly equivalent to the sort of technological, uh, technological overhead that is, that is found in state-of-the-art probabilistic forecasting method. And thus, it is not a reasonable proposition anymore to argue that uh, uh, probabilistic forecasting is beyond your means if you happen to be doing forecasting um, otherwise. Indeed, um, the, the, uh, indeed, if you have the means to produce state-of-the-art um, point forecast, then it is a near certainty that you can actually 
get very close to something equivalent to state-of-the-art probabilistic forecasting. Unfortunately, the age-old problem of forecasting in supply chain or otherwise remains uh, overfitting. No much data happens to be available. It is always possible to find a model that just fits. Um, in my experience, Overfitting is a very real problem in supply chains. However, what was interesting was that the M5 uh, gave us a chance to get a glimpse of the extent of the problem when considering a very large panel of potentially fairly talented uh, data scientists, at least for a sizable portion of the community. Kaggle, the platform that was used to support the M5 competition, offer two leaderboards. Um, the public leaderboard uh, is available since the very beginning of the competition and it provides uh, immediate feedback on the results on a very partial uh, validation data set. The private leaderboard becomes only accessible at the very end of the competition and it displays the final results associated to uh, a validation data set that is kept secret and not accessible to any participant before the very end of the, the competition. And with M5, what was very interesting was the extent of the magnitude of the rank shift between the public leaderboards to the private leaderboards. It is always expected that those ranks um, shift a little, uh, as it is the case in most um, cargo competition. However, in this specific competition, the shift were absolutely dramatic. Most of the contenders shifting from hundreds of uh, places during this final reveal. And thus, for me, it outlines all that uh, many uh, contenders in this um, forecasting competition did suffer from severe overfitting problems. From a supply chain perspective, it reflects that even if semi-professional data scientists can easily uh, suffer from severe overfitting problems, then it means that, yes, this problem is very acute in a real supply chain where you won't have the opportunity to benefit, like in DM5, from a clean setup to figure out, out whether it wa you were right or wrong. And thus, overfitting should really not be underestimated as far as supply chain is concerned, there are real dollars at stake. Finally, the M5 data set was a very small data set. The real challenge, if we were looking at Walmart, the wall company, would have been about 10,000 times larger than um, the data set that was used for the M5 competition. Furthermore, um, as the, the task at hand was uh, store replenishment, it means that this forecasting task in, in reality would have to be conducted on a daily basis. If we consider that uh, most methods that made it to the top ranks uh, in the M5 competition did actually require over 100 CPU hours uh, worth of compute, um, uh, we see that in terms of um, order of magnitude, if we were to just to translate that to the full scale of Walmart, we are talking of methods that happen to be state of the art, but also methods where we are talking of roughly something of the order of 1 million um, CPU hours of compute per day to carry the very same task. Thus, to my fellow supply chain practitioners, my message would be, um, you need to pay attention to um, the cost of those compute resources. Um, there are many of those methods that, that are very powerful and practical, but they can be a bit unwieldy in uh, production uh, settings. Also, as another shameless plug, I would like to point out that the method used by um, the team at LOCAD is consuming something about, which is about 1,000 times less computing resources compared to most methods that would be considered as mainstream in this um, competition. In conclusion, the M5 reminds us that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. While a wide variety of methods were used to achieve the top ranks 
in this forecasting competition, none of those methods were truly surprising. At the top of the rankings, we find a mix of um, gradient boosted trees and deep learning uh, networks, as it is the case for most Kaggle competitions nowadays. I am very certainly biased, and yet I would still argue that one of the most surprising methods was actually um, the method posed by LOCAD, although the element of surprise was only attached to the rather extreme simplicity of the method, the rest being fairly unsurprising. Thus, my final takeaway for the M5 is that we should be extremely suspicious of any interested party that claims any kind of breakthrough in the realm of uh, forecasting. The odds are very high for those claims to be entirely bogus.